Let's take a listen. We are waiting for people to come out uh, of the uh, death row. There are family members inside. We know the chief of police of Houston was there, Harris County DA Kim Ogg, and of course the wife of Irby, the officer who was killed 32 years ago. And at least one of her children uh, also witnessed it. And our Grace White was also inside for tonight's execution. And she has also walked out as we continue to watch here up in Huntsville, uh, the scene as people, uh, are, as we wait for a news conference to hear from prison officials about tonight's execution of Carl Wayne Bunchen, 32 years in the making. We'll be discussing exactly why it took so long for this execution to take place on average uh, inmates on death row are there about 11 years, 32 years, way beyond that. But there were some legal back and forth that caused a delay in the execution, but it has finally happened. The uh, official time of death for Carl Wayne Bunchen, 6.39 this evening. That's according to our reporter, Grace White, who witnessed the execution this evening. This is a story we've been talking about uh, since last week when we talked to Bunchen uh, on death row. That was our Grace White getting that exclusive interview. She also talked to the officer's widow, who was 29 at the time that her husband was shot and killed. Her two children were just three and one year old. That right there, the officer there uh, to the right, we just moved away, that was HPD Chief Troy Fenner. As we wait for this news conference, as I mentioned also, Kim Ogg. That's Fenner there with his back to you, the man with the bald head. That is HPD Chief Troy Fenner, who has been on the force about as long ago as when the death of James Irby happened. He's been with the HPD for about 32 years, and this happened in June of 1990, 32 years ago. So it is possible that the chief even knew uh, Irby at the time. Uh, you see motorcycles there. Uh, Officer Irby, who was 37 at the time that he was shot and killed, was a part of the motorcycle unit back in 1990 when he pulled over a vehicle with Bunchen, who was in a car. He was the passenger at the time, and Bunchen had an extensive criminal history. He'd only been on parole for six weeks when this traffic stop happened, and then the shooting. And so we talked to Bunchen last week from prison with our own Grace White. Uh, he indicated that he was sorry for what happened, that he regretted it. But he also said, which was something very confusing, that he claimed that he shot the officer in self-defense because he thought the officer was going to kill him. Of course, the jury did not buy his rationale or his argument. And so now, uh, 32 years later, Carl Wayne Bunchen has been executed at the prison in Huntsville. He was the oldest death row inmate uh, in the state of Texas. And by the way, on a side note, there was another inmate in his 70s in the state of Tennessee who was also scheduled to be executed tonight, but the governor stepped in and stopped that execution for the time being, but not so in Texas. Uh, at about uh, five o'clock this evening, the U.S. Supreme Court uh, declined to issue a stay to this execution, and that's when we knew that it would go forth, uh, something the family of uh, Officer Irby has waited a long time for. Uh, the children, now adults, were just toddlers at the time that their father was killed, and we'll be waiting to hear from prison officials and perhaps even family members uh, as to uh, what they witnessed Today, the death of Carl Wayne Bunchen. These are members, I believe, of the motorcycle unit. There are several motorcycles there from HBD. As I mentioned, the chief, HBD chief Troy Finner, is there, along with the Harris County DA Kim Ogg. Uh, we were told that a total of 37 people signed up to be witnesses to this execution. So that's a pretty good-sized number. Uh, assuming that because it took so long, there were a lot of people 
uh, who wanted to be there and witness this. There are people uh, who have uh, protested the execution. That happens typically, uh, who are opposed to the death penalty. And of course, the lawyer for Carl Wayne Bunchen had said that Bunchen was no longer a threat to society because of his age at 78. All right, again, Carl Bunchen convicted tonight at about 639. Uh, he was sentenced to die after he shot and killed Houston police officer James Irby. There we go, James Irby. This happened in June of 1990. Bunchen had an extensive criminal record and had been on parole for just six weeks when he killed Officer Irby. James was only 37 years old when he pulled over a car Bunchen was passenger in. Before his death, Irby talked about retirement and spending more time with those two small children. They were one and three years old, as I mentioned. Then, recently, on April 6, Bunchen filed an appeal in an effort to stop the execution. Uh, but today, the Supreme Court cleared the way with only Justice Stephen Breyer saying he would have granted Bunchen's execution to stay or he would have bun it, granted Bunchen's request to stay the execution. All right, now let's go to our Xavier Walton. He joins us live from Huntsville tonight. Xavier, walk us through uh, what the day has been like so far. Well, Len, when we got here, you know, around two o'clock, it was very, very quiet. And I spoke to the public information officer here and he said, oh, no, this is a, a typical day so far. And then right around three, things started to pick up a little bit. They blocked off this one way road here in front of the Huntsville unit. Um, protesters were on that side. You had supporters of Irby here behind me, and that's where you see all those motorcyclists as well. But earlier, right around six, they, they revved up their engines in support of James Irby. We're going to let you listen to that right now. So I don't know how well you can hear it, but this went on for about 15 minutes. It wasn't HPD. They were just standing beside their motorcycles. But you can see in the back there, it was a large group of motorcyclists who were here to support James Irby's widow, to support James Irby's family. Now, all of these folks, obviously, to support the family, um, we witnessed Mara Irby walk into death row, and this was earlier, um, and that honestly was one of the most powerful moments at least for us and from outside of death row um because everybody just stopped everybody stopped and everybody looked at you know we keep saying this moment in the making for three decades um but to, to be here and to watch it every photographer stopped it seemed like a, a moment of respect for this woman who has you know been through so much um, we also watched houston's police chief troy finner he went in as well and then we watched uh, district attorney kim Ogg. she uh, is here as well and we are told that they are expected to talk to press that's supposed to be uh so in about six minutes or so uh that we we're told that there was going to be a press conference and at that point we were supposed to hear from them as well um, we also watched our, our Grace White. She has been reporting on this story for, for years now. We watched her walk by uh, among the, the witnesses that went in and watched the execution of Carl Wayne Bunchen. Uh, Len, you have said it multiple times, you know, 78 years old, the oldest uh, death row inmate here in Texas, um, presumed or now dead, I should say, um, as of six. 39 here in Huntsville. Um, right now, protesters are just leaving. Uh, you can see there, there's still people here behind me. I could see uh, from here, uh, looks like Chief Troy Finner uh, may be walking to the podium, but we know this press conference isn't really going to start until 7 o'clock, so we're all just kind of waiting right now as we've all gotten that message, and we know that Carl Wayne Bunchen uh, died here by lethal injection. He was executed as of 639, so really we're just waiting to hear uh, with that press conference, Len. As you mentioned, Xavier, thank you. Bunchen's case has dragged on for a long time, as we mentioned, 32 years. Joining us now, KHU 11 legal analyst Carmen Rowe. And Carmen, why did it take so long for this execution to take place? 
So Lynn, like any death penalty case, it goes through a long legal battle after death is assessed. But this case is unique because the law in Texas changed after Buncham was sentenced to death. And that law change required juries to consider mitigation evidence before assessing a death sentence. And in this case, there was no question that Buncham's childhood was traumatic and marked by abuse. Bunchen's attorneys argued as of late that he was no longer a threat to society, partly because of his age. Uh, the courts didn't see it that way. Have you ever heard that argument before? No, Lynn, I haven't. And neither has the Fifth Circuit, who made clear that, one, there's no legal basis for this claim. Two, it was untimely, and it should have been raised in front of the jury who assessed death. And finally, dealing with his future dangerousness, they said it's not a certainty, it's a probability, one that was weighed by a jury, and ultimately they made the determination that he was a future danger in this society, and so they gave him the death penalty as a result. You talked about uh, these death penalty cases sometimes dragging on in the courts, and in fact, an appeals court vacated his death penalty in 2009. Do you know what the reasoning was for that? Yeah, so it was because of this law change. So in 2009, a jury convicted him and a jury assessed the death penalty, but they didn't consider that mitigation evidence dealing with his childhood and whatnot. And so in 2012, he was then presented to another jury that found him guilty. And that second jury, after considering all the mitigation evidence, again, assessed the death penalty in this case. And so were, the, were his lawyers, Bunchen's lawyers, it sounds like they had come to the end of the road by appealing to the Supreme Court. That's the last stop. Yeah, and he had two juries, two different juries here in Houston that convicted him, two different juries that assessed death. And so this is what happens in a lot of death penalty cases. Uh, the lawyers do everything they can to save an individual from the ultimate um, execution point, and that's what happened in this case. They made some really uh, creative arguments here for a gentleman that that is very, very far along in age, as you said, the oldest individual on death row, but ultimately there needed to be a, a legal basis to stop this execution, and the Fifth Circuit and the United States Supreme Court did not find one. Uh, Carmen, what happened in this case in 1990 echoes an argument we are hearing today about people uh, being either on parole or out on bond. Uh, Bunchen has a, had a criminal record and he'd been out on parole, I believe, for just a few weeks when he killed Officer Irby. And, and it raises the question again about whether or not people with criminal histories can be allowed back out on the street. I mean, this is something we're, we're arguing about now and that was the occasion back then, your thoughts? You know, Lynn, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that Bunchen's prior criminal history wasn't violent in nature. And so I don't know that it was really predictable or foreseeable that this would occur. Uh, this is a horrible offense. And, um, you know, there's no question that the facts here are, are not in his favor regarding any self-defense issues. But, you know, bond is something that people should be entitled to in certain cases. Certainly in this county, what we're seeing is a lot of bonds being set in violent cases, in capital murder cases. And I think everybody on both sides of the bar agrees that that's unusual and probably not appropriate in many of these cases, given the violent nature of the allegations that's before these judges. And so here we are tonight, uh, the death of Carl Wayne Bunchen. 32 years, in your, your time as, as a lawyer, do you recall when somebody's been on death row this long? Never. I mean, generally, I know the average that you gave was 11 years. I mean, generally, uh, prior to 1990, I think most individuals sat on death row for about 20 years, but 30 years is a really long time. And there's other cases that were also retried because of this change in the law in Texas. And those individuals did not stay on death row as long as Bunchen. And so this case is really unusual because we see this elderly gentleman who doesn't look like a future danger, who looks like someone who we could send home, but that's just not the way that the law works in Texas as we deal with the death penalty after a jury has assessed that death is appropriate in the case for all of the reasons that they're charged in the jury charge. KHU 11 legal analyst, Carmen Rowe, as always, thank you for your insight 
on this case. We are awaiting a news conference uh, just outside of uh, death row in Huntsville, outside of the prison. As we look at people who are gathered there, there are several, many police officers, the family of James Irby, the officer who died back in 1990. We have our own reporters who are there. Uh, we're awaiting a news conference. We expect to hear perhaps from prison officials, maybe even uh, the widow of James Irby. We're just not quite sure, but uh, it was scheduled to start right at seven and they came out about 15 minutes ago and we're still waiting for people to approach the microphone and begin this news conference uh, to hear uh, some responses uh, to tonight's execution, the first of 2022 in the state of Texas, as we just mentioned, a man who'd been on death row for 32 years. Our Grace White has been covering this story extensively. She talked with Wayne Bunchen, Carl Wayne Bunchen, in prison recently. Uh, he talked about his regrets as to what happened. She also talked to uh, James Irby's widow. That's her with the, in the red hair, just kind of behind the guy in the jacket. That's her with the, with the earring dangling. Uh, that is uh, Mara Irby, the widow of James Irby, the police officer who was killed. Uh, she, of course, witnessed tonight's execution. Uh, she and her family talked about uh, not exactly sure knowing how they would feel once this would no longer hang over their heads. Imagine uh, 32 years. Uh, Mara Irby, who's now 60, was uh, about 29 when her husband was killed. And here, uh, all these years later, she uh, finally got to witness his execution. Uh, perhaps relief, we don't know, but we may hear from her here coming up at any moment. We mentioned that her husband was part of the motorcycle unit with HPD, a lot of motorcycles uh, today at uh, Huntsville for uh, what happened tonight. His fellow brethren uh, telling the widow that there was a sea of blue at his funeral uh, in 1990, and they promised there would be a sea of blue at the execution, and that has certainly happened in Huntsville tonight. Just to the left, that is Chief Troy Finner, right there now just kind of blocked out of sight. He's there, and to his right is Harris County DA Kim Ogg. Uh, she is there as well. They were all there to witness the execution tonight, again occurring at 6.39 uh, p.m. in Huntsville. As we continue to wait to hear from prison officials who typically have a news conference after these executions, and we do have right now final statement from Carl Wayne Bunchen. Let's see. And this is from Grace White, who's our reporter, who's been covering this story uh, very closely. Carl Wayne Bunchen in a final statement said, I would like to thank everyone that has stayed. Karen, Linda, Barry, Danny, Barbara. God bless each and every one of you. Uh, Bunchen goes on to say, I have a message to the Irby family. The shootout occurred June 27, 1990. One week later, a police officer on his day off named Michael Garrett showed up to my cell. He was wearing civilian clothes. I thought he was a chaplain. He came to the back where it is a super seg. The guys there began to ridicule him because the officer brought me a small Bible. He said, boy, do you know that you just hit a brick wall? I am a deputy sheriff. He asked me, have you been to church, ever been to church? Have you ever heard of Jesus? I said, yes. He then gave me a small Bible, which I call a Gideon Bible, and read from the book of Romans. The deputy said, get right with God. The deputy's buddies, five or six guys standing in the hallway, were making fun of him. And the deputy said, don't listen to them. Listen to my voice. Uh, this is Bunchen talking, uh, he's talking about July 4th, 1990, already behind bars after the killing. I wanted the Irby family to know one thing. I do have remorse for what I did. Miss Irby, the little one year old girl, I can't remember her name, uh, Cody, who was three, uh, she and Miss Irby's husband, I hope to see you in heaven someday. When you show up, I will give you a big hug. To all of my friends that stuck with me through all of these years, I'm not going to say goodbye, just saying so long, I am ready 
to go. Those are the words, the final statement from Carl Wayne Bunchen, uh, executed tonight at 639 for killing Houston police officer James Irby back in 1990. Interesting, he talks about someone coming uh, to the jail and offering him a Bible and talking about, I've never heard this before, uh, meeting the Irby family in heaven one day and giving them a big hug. 32 years after this murder, Carl Wayne Bunchen executed tonight, the first execution in the state for 2022 and the oldest inmate on death row in Huntsville. We are continuing uh, to wait on a news conference from prison officials and perhaps to hear from family members, to hear what they have to say, their thoughts about what they witnessed and all the years that have gone by for this to take place. We were talking to our legal analyst, Carmen Rowe, who explained sort of the backstory as to why it took so long for this execution to happen. Uh, there were two juries that uh, went over the punishment phase. Uh, one lifted the death penalty, then another jury said, let's go back to the death penalty. And then tonight, the U.S. Supreme Court declined to stay Bunchen's execution. That cleared the way for it happening tonight. As we watch Mara Irby, the widow of Officer James Irby, it looks like she may be approaching the microphone. She's walking with HPD Chief Troy Finner. And that is her daughter behind her in the dress. Walking to the microphone. Now let's listen. Minute or so, waiting on one more person, and then we'll get started. So officials say they're waiting just another minute for uh, one other person to show up. If you heard uh, some noise in the background, it sounded like there was some chanting, possibly uh, anti-death penalty uh, protesters. Not really sure, but you could hear people yelling. I'm assuming that, that here in the foreground is a prison official uh, who will speak, and then it looks like the widow of Officer Irby will also uh, give some comments, and it looks like she is with uh, other family members. They say they're waiting for one other person uh, to approach the podium before they give comments. You can hear somebody yelling in the background, but you can't make out exactly what they're saying. Good afternoon, my name is Jason Clark. I'm the Chief of Staff for the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. Carl Bunchen was executed tonight for the 1990 murder of Houston Police Officer James Irby. A lethal dose of pentobarbital was administered, and 13 minutes later, he was pronounced deceased at 639. Prior to the lethal injection, Bunchen did make a last statement, and I'll provide you with that lengthy last statement, but I'll summarize it now. He thanked his friends. He addressed the Irby family, acknowledging that he was the killer of their father and of her husband, and he expressed remorse for those actions. And then the lethal injection then proceeded, and he was executed. This was the first execution in which an inmate spiritual advisor was allowed to touch and pray during the execution, and there were no issues that took place with that. Bunchen was the first inmate to be executed in the state of Texas this year. At this time, I'm now going to uh, pass this over to Maura Irby, the widow of James Irby. First, I want to thank the Houston Police Department for their support and kindness and love for the last nearly 32 years. I know that Jim, like I, am so proud of our children and the strength and the fortitude that, and resilience that they've shown all this time growing up without him. Uh, I can only say that it was an amazing feeling and I felt like I took the 
deepest breath I've been able to in the last 32 years and I feel joy. I'm sorry that someone died, but I didn't think of him as a person. I just thought him, of him as a thing, as a cancer on my, the face of my family. So I also want to thank everyone here at the prison and uh, Janice with the Victims Assistance. They have been just wonderful in, in helping us along. I also want to mention that there were a lot of good things that we made happen and come out of Jim's life. And other than that, I still miss him 32 years later. Thank you for being here. This time, I'd like to introduce Kim Ogg, the Harris County District Attorney. So. And I'd like to invite up the Chief of Police, Troy Fenner. You bet. Um, I'm Kim Ogg, Harris County DA. I'm with Chief Troy Fenner of HPD. We're proud to support the Irby family, and we're glad that after 32 long years, justice has finally been done. Until his dying breath, while Carl Bunchen said he had remorse, he claimed it was a shootout. He never accepted total responsibility for his actions, not before this family and not before our Lord. Carl Bunchen was a career criminal when he graduated into sex offending and became a child rapist. After that, he uh, became a cold-blooded executioner of James Irby. There was no shootout. There was a murder of an officer in full uniform in the line of duty who left his family that day. There was no one to touch him during his dying moments. There was no one to say, a prayer for him. God rest the soul of James Irby today. Thank you. Uh, real quickly, I'm proud to stand here with the family and uh, just here in support. And thank God after 32 years, some sense of closure and moving forward. But uh, what's significant to me as the chief and all other law enforcement leaders, we will forever stand by our survivor family. And that's the truth, and I, that's a promise to the very end. So thank you all for, for being here, and uh, what, a, what a strong family. Yeah. What a strong family, 32 years. So thank you all. We have been watching a news conference that just wrapped up, uh, listening to not only the uh, Houston Police Chief Troy Finner, but also the Harris County DA Kim Ogg. And prior to that, um, moving words from the widow of Officer James Ir Irby, who witnessed uh, the execution of her husband's killer at 639 this evening. Uh, we have two reporters on scene, Grace White and Xavier Walton. Xavier, let's start with you. Uh, Len, very, you know, uh, listening to that and hearing James Irby's widow speak, uh, the one quote that stuck with me most, uh, just feet away, uh, she said, I have taken the deepest breath I have taken in the last 32 years. Um, all of this happening, obviously, uh, back in June of 1990, and for, for her to feel that pain and this to be somewhat closure, you can still, you could tell that it is still uh, impacting her. Uh, I'm gonna step out of the way and just give you a sense of, you know, what's going on right now. There were dozens of Houston police officers. Her, her husband, James Irby, was with the force for eight 
18 years at the time of his death. He was a motorcycle cop. That's why you see all the motorcycle cops here. And it was a huge show of support for about 15 minutes. They had engines revving, not police, but supporters of the family for Irby. And also, you can't help but mention this, on the other side of the street, there were protesters. Uh, and, and protesters were yelling during this entire uh, press conference. You know, Carl Wayne Bunchen, um, 78 years old, uh, lethal injection put to death at 639. And for the first time, uh, one of the uh, communications people here at Huntsville said that, you know, Carl Wayne Bunchen had a, a, not a priest, but, but someone to pray for him as he was getting ready to uh, be executed. And that is the first time that, according to him, that that has happened uh, here in Texas, here at Huntsville. But, but as we, we just kind of, you know, sit here, stand here, and sort of take it all in. It is a gloomy day, um, and we got here about 2 o'clock. Protesters are still here. Uh, some are still yelling, and the family, um, you know, obviously they're still taking it in as this is all very fresh and happening. Um, you know, as we speak, it is very fluid. So, Len, uh, for now, we're going to get back to, to reporting, and I'm going to send it back to you. Xavier, thank you. Uh, you put it well, and you stated the quote exactly. Uh, the widow of James Irby saying after the execution that she was able to take the biggest breath that she was able to take in 32 years. Imagine that uh, there tonight with her two now grown children. Our Grace White is also in Huntsville tonight. Grace. Lynn, a lot of people out here this evening to support the Irby family were with the retired U.S. Marshal Gary Blankenship. Talk to us about what it means to you to be here today. Well, it's an honor. Jim and I grew up we played together as children. We rode together as partners on the police department. I was, I was there the night he got killed. Just a short time afterward, I actually took him to the morgue. And uh, I've gone through 32 years, two trials with the family, watched the kids grow up. Jim and I had kids the same time, and our families were close. And it's just uh, finally there's a little closure here uh, for the family, and pure evil is gone from this world. And Gary, you were actually his partner. Yes. For how many years? Oh, for I don't know, seven, eight years. But again, we grew up. We were we played together as kids, so it's uh, we hunted. I mean, we we did a lot of things off duty together too. So it was just he was a Jim was a good friend, mm -hmm. and it's a tragic thing. And like I said, pure evil is gone from this world. Why was it important for you to be here this well, evening to, to witness? You were one of the witnesses. And Jim's kids, support the family and Jim's kids. That was the main thing. It just, uh, this has been a long road. You know, it's one of the flaws in our criminal justice system that this family had to endure this for 32 years. Yeah, a lot of people wonder why, why so long? Why did it take so long, this particular the, case? The legal maneuvering and, you know, some things that happened in the original trial. And it's just, it was a rough road. Gary Blankenship, thank you so much for your time. As you can see behind me, uh, still gathering around the family, law enforcement officers. We saw Chief of Police Troy Fenner, uh, District Attorney Kim Ogg, a lot of people out here uh, to support this family after three decades of living this every day. We've also seen some protesters on the other side of the street, a smaller number, but definitely some people out here mm -hmm. that were speaking out against the death penalty. That's standard for these executions here in Huntsville. We'll send it back to you, Len. Grace, you've been closely connected to this story for some time now. You interviewed Bunchen in prison. You interviewed uh, Irby's widow and her daughter, and today, you witness the execution. Uh, your thoughts about today? Well, Len, it was significant because Carl Bunchen is the oldest person on Texas death row. So this execution was significant because he was the oldest person that has been executed in the state of Texas. And it was also significant because we saw a spiritual advisor for the first time since the Supreme Court ruled actually standing in the execution chamber. He had his hand on Bunchen's foot and he was able to pray for several minutes over the process before it started. And then as it began, he read Psalm 23 and was holding a Bible in his hand during the execution. Grace White reporting from Huntsville tonight. Grace, thank you. The widow of the officer who was killed, James Irby, saying tonight after witnessing the execution, quote, I feel joy.
Those were her words. We thank you for watching this extended special edition digital coverage on KHU 11. We'll have more digital coverage as well as our KHU 11 app and join us tonight on KHU 11 News at 10.